next uh, part of my videos is going to be a three-part series and it's going to focus on our immune system, how to boost our own immune system. I think it's pretty fitting considering everything going on right now, so I'm going to divide it into three different parts. Um, again, the aim of my game with putting these videos out is to create this inner world, this strong inner world that we're able to deal with any adverse uh, events that happen that are counter to our optimal health. It's kind of the aim of my game, so that's why we're focusing on our immune system. So the three parts of this video, um, the, well the two different topics we're going to talk about is diet and lifestyle. So the first two videos are going to focus on our diet. The first one's going to be on getting the nutrients into our bodies, what nutrients are going to optimize our immune system. The second part of the diet, the second video, is going to focus on actually then absorbing the nutrients that we intake, because uh, that's obviously, he would say, almost more important. Um, and then the very last video, the third video, is going to focus then on lifestyle, the types of lifestyle that we can have to optimize our immune system. So here we go with the first video um, on diet and how to get the nutrients in. So we kind of know what we need to do here. Eat, you know, have more of the good stuff and avoid the bad stuff. But just to kind of reiterate uh, what's going to help our immune system is first of all focusing on veggies. We want to eat the rainbow. So basically our vitamins are the direct represent, the color in our vegetables are the direct representation of our vitamins. They're just pigments. Our micronutrients are pigments. So when you're eating your red, orange, your yellow, green, uh, blue, violet, indigo, all of the colors of the rainbow, those are pigments that are the direct representation of the vitamins that are within them. So especially with vegetables and a little less with fruit, um, but we want to have as most the most colorful plate we can possibly get. That's going to give us some antioxidants that are going to help with inflammation within us, which is going to alleviate uh, the part of our system that has to focus on lowering inflammation and let the system focus on our immunity, on getting rid of those pathogens and our first and second lines of defense. So that's um, with, regarding veggies. Then the next thing to talk about, again, we know these things, refined sugars, refined grains, and don't don't don vegetable oils. So let's kind of tackle each of those one at a time. So our uh, refined sugars, you know, where we're pretty much getting those. Those are going to be from your baked goods, your candies, your chocolates, all these kinds of things. But it's also hidden, in fact, refined grains are as well, the, the gluten and all that kind of stuff, is all found within our sauces as well, even sometimes in our mixed nuts. And nuts are wonderful for you, but if they've got some of these um, refined sugars and oils and all that kind of stuff, you need to start getting used to reading the ingredients and, and checking out for all these different refined sugars, refined grains, and these vegetable oils. But just to sidetrack on the grains real quick, for those of us that eat animal products as well, I'm not just talking about the grains we ingest ourselves, but I'm also talking about the grains that the animals we're eating had as well. So that whole little new saying, we are what we eat, what they ate. So whether you're getting your protein from uh, the grains themselves or if you're getting them from animals who ate grains, you want to focus on grass-fed or pasture-raised animal products. So what's happening here is when they're fed on these you know, GMO'd and glyphosate-filled um, grains, they're creating inflammation in your body. So what the grass-fed and pasture-raised animal products are going to do is not only are you not ingesting those inflammatory causing compounds, but you're actually fortifying yourself to better deal with other inflammation causing compounds as well because our pasteurized animal products are going to have omega-3s. The animals that ate grass and, and natural pasture, things of the pasture, are going to have omega-3s which help us to fight that inflammation. So, but again, I'm not just talking about animal products. For those of us vegans or vegetarians, we need to focus that our protein sources are also from non-GMO and organic sources so that we're not getting that arachidonic acid and the glyphosates that are wreaking havoc inside of our bodies. So those, of course, are your tofus, your tempehs, and um, when you're combining your legumes and your grains,
vegans. You want them to be non-GMO and organic sources so that you're eating uh, fresh, good, whole foods inside of you. So then the last one that I had mentioned was vegetable oils. I'm talking about your sunflower oils, your safflower, your canola or rapeseed oils. Uh, these are all actually quite inflammatory causing inside of you. Unfortunately, these are hidden in almost everything. You've gotta to have to look on the ingredient labels. And also when you eat out at restaurants and take away foods and all that, you are also going, they're using vegetable oils typically. So you have to realize that you are eating food that is causing inflammation inside of your body. So try to eat most of your, prepare most of your meals at home, uh, which means then that you'll be able to use more fruit derived oils and nuts. So I'm talking about your avocado, your olives, um, your olive oil and your macadamia nut oil and then also sesame seed oil as well. And then to a lesser extent, your coconut oils and maybe your animal derived fats. Those are have a lot of saturated fat in them, but for cooking, they're actually a little bit more stable than those vegetable oils. So they're less likely um, to, to, you know, to oxidize so terribly in our bodies. But of course, like I say, to a lesser extent, because there are correlations um, in saturated fat. I will do a video on oils as well um, to clarify some little issues there. But the thing is, is those vegetable oils are definitely causing a little bit of havoc. So the last thing is just your vitamin D. Vitamin D is a great thing to have, but any foods that are full of wonderful fats, you're going to get some good vitamin Ds. So again, your salmons, your avocados, your nuts, um, and, and all that kind of stuff. Not just salmon, but you know, mackerel and sardine as well. Uh, they're gonna be great for vitamin D. It, vitamin D is something that maybe you wanna think about a supplement because it the best source is from the sunlight, and of course we go through different seasons. So I'll also be putting out a video on um, supplements that I think maybe you should consider and vitamin D would be on that list. Um, so that's kind of it for getting the nutrients in. The second video is going to be about optimizing the absorption of those nutrients. So stay tuned for that video. See ya.